building. Can I now ask that the live stream is started and verbal confirmation is provided when we start the broadcasting? I confirm, Mr. Chairman, that we are now recording. Thank you. Welcome to the meeting of the Planning and Regulatory Committee. The agenda papers and other relevant information for this meeting are available for the public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website. Please remember your words and actions should be chosen carefully. And members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. The Council is streaming this meeting live on the Herefordshire Council YouTube channel and also making a recording. This recording will be available via, via the Council's website shortly after the meeting has concluded. Other attendees are permitted to film, photograph and record the meeting, provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. If you should not wish to be filmed or photographed, please identify yourself so that every, anyone who intends to record the meeting is made aware. No one. To ensure that the recording quality is maintained, could members speak as clearly as possible and keep background noise to a minimum and ensure that mobile phones are, or other devices are turned to silence? Welcome to all those in attendance. I now ask Mr. Withers to introduce all the officers. Thank you, Councillor James, and good morning, Councillors. Um, uh, my name is Simon Withers. I'm uh, one of the development managers uh, working in the planning team. I'm here today to provide uh, planning uh, guidance uh, as and when necessary. I've also got uh, the privilege of, of uh, presenting the second item on today's agenda. If I can introduce uh, the officers that are also here to help, uh, on my far left is, is Matthew Evans from the Democratic Services team. Uh, on my immediate right is Elsie Morgan, Senior Planning Officer, who will be presenting the first item on today's agenda. And then on my uh, far right is Kelly Gibbons, who will be uh, assisting uh, with uh, advice on the second item. Joining online today, we have uh, Loretta Commons, uh, the Planning Lawyer, uh, who will be here if needed uh, at any point and Katie Evans, the Team Leader, Area Engineer, to offer Okay, sorry. sorry, did I say? Oh, sorry, Katie Jones, I apologise. The uh, team leader, area engineer, will be here to offer advice and guidance on uh, any highway or parking related matters. Uh, I should also say we've got Henry Merrick's Mobitroid here, who's uh, running the technology uh, and recording everything. So he's, he's away at the far end of, uh, of the table. Uh, oh, my apologies. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll hand back to Councillor Jones. Thank you. Go on. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you made that. I'll speak with her this week. I'm glad you made that particular uh, a few mistakes, which gives me an opportunity. Bearing in mind we are at the first meeting, and some of us are some of us are new when we're still meeting. We, can I apologise in that in uh, 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 yes. at the beginning, if I get the names wrong at any particular time in the, in the meeting. Can I now ask, uh, have uh, the apologies? We have received apologies from Councillor Stone. I don't think there are any other apologies. Uh, there are no substitutes. Um, now, I'd like to ask if anyone wishes to declare an interest. I will ask the council in turn if there is a part of mm -hmm. to wish to prepare an interest in any of the items on the agenda. Mm -hmm. There are none. That's, that makes it all very clear. Now we go to the confirmation of the meeting of the meeting held on the 18th of April. Uh, please note that the previous ministers under the count um, under minute 84, Mr. Wall spoke in objection to the resolution and said states. Uh, and should state for rather than four. Other minutes of the meeting held on the twenty uh, on the eighteenth of April, two thousand and twenty-three, subject to the corrections outlined, approved. Please, please, can members raise their hands to against us if they are for or against? Can I bear in mind if you weren't at that meeting, just abstain from that particular meeting? Those who are for approval of the meeting. No one against, and I assume everyone else is uh, abstained. <laughs> right, thank you. Can I um, just move on to chairman's and I have very few announcements to, to
to make other than to welcome those new members to the committee. Um, I hope you enjoy your time as, um, on this particular committee. It's, it's one of those committees where you feel, unlike most other committees, you actually do actually do something, albeit sometimes not for the good, but so, oh, but uh, you do. And I hope we can uh, um, progress uh, in a good spirit over the coming year. Right, now I'll move Claire, on. I'm sorry, um, on the, the minutes last time, I think Claire voted for the minutes, Claire? Yes. Uh, it says you were put your apologies in. Sorry, so I mis misread that. There's a point of accuracy, that's all. Oh, I do apologize. No, no, it is a point of accuracy. I have to have a look in my diary now that you've mentioned it. <laughs> it says apologies for absence. I was one, you were another Tony Johnson and Anne-Marie Probert. Oh, I do. It apologize. says at the head of the minutes. Yes, yes point of accuracy. Yeah. Okay. Right. I don't think that's changed the. No, 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 no. We can't talk. We can have a look. Okay, so there might be somebody out there who. Yeah. <laughs> We'll pick on, pick on some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, right, right. And anyway, we let's know we've got a relatively light agenda day, which is I think is quite uh, a good thing. But bear in mind the first meeting of the committee. Can I now move on to the first um, uh, application? Um, we have no public speakers. Um, the application concerns land to the north. Of the B4348 Much Jew Church Heritage Area. Proposed direction of a detached dwelling house. I asked the officer to make the Mrs. and Miss Elsie Morgan to make a presentation on the application. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, to members. Uh, firstly, I would like to draw attention to the update sheet. Images were provided to show previous flooding in the locality of the site, and an additional letter of objection were provided from the parish council via the ward member. As per the update sheet, these reiterated concerns already raised in the consultation process and have been addressed with the committee report. Therefore, there's no change to the recommendation. This application is made in full for the construction of a detached three bedroom dwelling. The site is located to the northeast of the B4348, which runs through Much New Church, adjacent to a collection of semi detached dwelling stone as Church View. The site uh, fronts the road, which forms its southwestern boundary, and the plot size mirrors the residential curtilage of number six Church View, forming its west boundary. Next slide, please. Policy RA2 identifies the settlements, which will be the main focus of proportionate housing development under figure 4.14, which defines much due church as such a settlement. As set out in the preamble to this policy, any proposal has to be assessed against its relationship to the main built-up form of the settlement. This is identified by the red line boundary in the top image. Much due church is generally characterized by wayside development running along along the roadside as well as small estates set back from the main road. The adjacent, adjacent dwellings at Church View are comprised of semi-detached properties accessed directly off the B4348. Though set back, they have a relationship with the road set out in being a form. The proposal site lies immediately adjacent to these dwellings, though at the edge of the settlement it is considered to lie adjacent to the main built-up form of Much Due Church, reading as a natural extension to it. Therefore, the principle of this proposal is considered acceptable and in accordance with planning policy R2. Next slide, please. The application site lies adjacent to an established row of residential dwellings on the edge of the settlement. As such, the dwelling agreed as an extension uh, to this pattern of development. The scheme has been amended in response to the landscape officer's comments to include a change of roof colour from grey to brown tile. Simplified principal elevation, utilizing conceptual features such as an entrance canopy porch, in keeping the demonstration with those shown on the screen, the lowering of these to meet the upper floor windows, and removal of proposed floor of windows. The landscape officer lends support for these changes in the green infrastructure on the site, though maintain concern that the single dwelling would not integrate with the existing arc of <coughs> houses to set to the west. Though somewhat at odds with the immediate adjacent residential layout, it is considered that the dwelling would not be unduly out of keeping with the wider settlement character given the existing variety of orientation and layout. The top image shows the character of the adjacent semi detached dwellings at Church View, the lower image showing number six Church View and its relationship with the proposal site. Next slide, please. The dwelling itself would be constructed of red brick. Uh, elevations under ground tile roof with UPVC drain water bids and windows. 
From the principal elevation, the dwelling room is a simple two story structure that mirrors the neighboring properties. A two story gable end projects from the rear, providing open plan dining area and master bedroom. The proposed development includes sufficient private amenity space for proposed residents by way of a rear garden. Given the orientation of the building in relation to the neighbouring dwellings and the proposed frustration positioning, it is not considered to have an adverse impact upon residential community in terms of overbearing or overlooking. In terms of the wider visual impact as detailed in paragraph 6.15 to 6.21 in the committee report, there is sufficient separation through distance or built form between the proposed dwelling and any nearby heritage assets to alleviate any adverse impact on their significance. Next slide, please. The application has been reviewed by the council's ecologist, who confirms that subject to conditions including biodiversity enhancement features and restriction on external lighting, no objection is raised to the proposal with sufficient distance from Wernbrook, and the applicant is reminded of their legal duty of care reported under the Wildlife and Countryside Act. The ecologist comments make reference to the previous habitat regulations assessment undertaken in relation to the previous outline application for board levels on the site, and no objection was raised by natural law at this time. Given that the application is for one dwelling with foul waste to be managed by a public foul water network and treated at a wastewater treatment works, it is concluded that there's no needed for an updated HRA process. Next slide, please. The previous outline application on the site was refused on water management and flood risk reasons and dismissed an appeal. However, it's worth noting that the inspector dismissed the appeal on the basis of insufficient information that the application did not include flood risk assessment to provide a level of certainty with regards to risks and effects. In addition to this, the previous application site was larger and proposed up to four dwellings with only indicative siting as the commission was drawn the outline. This application differs in that the boundary is informed by the area identified as being a risk of flooding, with flood mapping and assessment provided to support the scheme. It is recognised that there is local concern with regards to flood water um, due to this increased hard sanding. However, the use of an attenuation tank that will slow the runoff and direct water into the watercourse is shown on the plan. The land drainage consultant has had sight of this um, scheme and the flood risk assessment, raising no technical objection, subject to the inclusion of conditions to secure these methods. Next slide, please. The scheme includes sufficient parking and turning space within the site with 43 metres visibility display in each direction, which is considered acceptable in the context of the road network. As shown on the topographical survey, there is a ditch falling towards Wormbrook. However, the proposed access point does not cross this. As such, it's considered acceptable to secure driveway construction details via standard motion. Next slide, please. Is just a few images to show the context of the proposal site. So the top images show the view along the road side to the northwest and southeast of the site, and the bottom left image looking onto the site from the road side with the boundary of number six church view. And the bottom right image shows the ditch identified on the topographical sur survey located uh, sufficiently away to need proposed access. But to conclude, the uh, site is considered to be directly adjacent to the main built up form of much due church settlement, where residential development is accepted in principle. The concerns raised by the landscape officer and the degree of visual harm are acknowledged. However, it's as above, the proposal generally takes reference from the adjacent development so as to not be overtly out of character. It's also necessary to be mindful of the fact that the previously reviewed scheme for four dwellings on the site was not advanced on the basis of landscape effects. No other technical objections have been received from drainage, highways, ecology, and welsh water. The proposal is in accordance with the NPDF and core strategy policies, and it's therefore officer recommendation that this application be approved subject to the recommended conditions. Thank you. Right. If um, I can now ask, actually, we begin the debate with an opening statement by the local member, and the local member is Councillor Richard Thomas for this particular award. Well, good morning, everybody, Mr. Chairman, officers, members of the planning uh, committee. I don't think we've got it on there, one general public. Anyway, um, it's my first time doing this, and I have to say it doesn't give me any pleasure at all to do this. Um, but there is one, uh, I, I have sort of I'm asking for planning to be refused on the basis that the application raises unusual planning issues which would benefit from the consideration by this committee. 
I've asked for this because this field that this um, thing floods. The EA have produced a flood plan, <clears throat> which you will all see is that one there, which is totally inaccurate. So I have great sympathy with uh, the planning officer because she has to go with what she's been told. You will see from the, I think we have got photographs showing a considerable amount of flooding. And these photographs were taken at eight o'clock in the morning. This field flooded at 12 o'clock the previous night. So you will see some of the photographs where the water has already gone down. Now, when I received the email from um, the officer, I would immediately, immediately ask the question in my mind, if I travel this road probably twice a week, I have actually driven through flood water quite some time ago, I think it was 2012, um, the flood water that I shouldn't probably have driven through, but I got through it. Um, so then after that, I contacted the chairman of the um, Massachusetts Parish Council um, and discussed it with him. These photographs all came to light. These photographs were taken in 2000 and 2020. Now, so I obviously went back and investigated again. I went to number six in the evening and spoke to the resident, the owner of number six, who I said, the reason I was there, and he said, oh, right, yes. And can oh, can I show you something? So he took me around to the out the side of his house into his garden and said, well, we had floods last year, and it came to there, which was just at the edge of his garden. The proposed site, uh, proposed floor plans and everything of, of, of this, which is also in public record, shows the actual finished floor height of approximately one meter below his garden. If it flooded to his garden, this house is going to be unfortunately underwater. And, and as I say, I great sympathy for, for the officer because she has to look at I think. And there was also a survey carried out by the um, applicants, um, which I looked at last night, about 105 pages, all trying to very much prove that it didn't flood. But all the residents know, and I have had been to see quite a few uh, of the older residents, and they all say this floods and it floods right up to the garden and number six. So this would make sure. So this is why I brought this in. Now, it, I know this site extremely well. There is plenty of ground. Um, Trying to think which which one would show it, but if you look on the flood plan one, there is a, this is what's called low lane, and that's where there there is plenty of room there for for whole houses, all miles, probably two three meters above the flood line. So I do not understand why having this has been refused once and refused by uh, appeal that they come back to put it in the same place. So my my redirection is that on the fact of it, it, it flood. Um, yeah, the previous application you'll probably see was on October, uh, 1st of October 2020, and that was refused by um, planners because of flooding. The case went to appeal and it was upheld on the 25th of May 21. Um, you will see, you've all seen the extras, the photographs, um, and as I say, the EA map is totally um, inaccurate. So I can only say I urge the members of this committee to refuse this planning uh, on the on the back of planning. Thank you. Right. Um, bearing in mind, we will have to have some evidence of that um, you know, before we can do that. Otherwise, we let, lay ourselves open to the challenge. Um, can I now ask to begin the debate? Councillor. Thank you, Jack. Um, I went through this application three or four times because the area is very, very familiar to me as it is with Councillor Thomas. I was actually married in St. David's Church in Western Church, and I know the area very well. Um, the flooding issue, first and foremost, the flooding issue, 
The application last time for houses was refused and appealed. Prior to that, was there a previous application for one? Prior to the four? Um, prior to the application that was considered by appeal, there was a, a, an application made under a different procedure, a, a permission and principle procedure, which is uh, a, a relatively new piece of legislation, a relatively new form of consent. The decision there was a technical decision that that particular site didn't qualify for consideration under the planning and principle or permission and principle. So hence the follow-up application, which was Thank you, sir. So the, the original one though was, was for only one property, the original one? Uh, that, that permission in principle was before, before the, 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 the outline. Um, having gone through the papers and something else, the parish council in Muschie Church are very active in what they, they do. They're a good parish council. Now, they're strongly against it for the reasons they've stated in their forms. They're not adverse to development. There is a development currently going on the west of the, the village, the front that are being built, and they're taking on board everything that's being said. When you've got a, a parish council that knows its area and knows what it's like, and as Councillor Jane said, we need evidence of flooding. But I would have to agree with Councillor Thomas, that does flood and it comes up to the house because the, the occupant of number six uh, said it came up to a high level, it has. And I know that well because my mother-in-law lives in much new church, not in that particular part, but a different part. And there's been all sorts of areas of water coming onto the road and higher. It will affect the area and I'm looking at this, I would want to see what other people say, but I'm looking to see what the parish councils say. They've said what they said, and if we have parish councils, we should respect their views. Thank you very much. Nothing else to say at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Excuse my voice, I'm recovering from a, an infection. Um, it's, it's always interesting when there's a variance between the officer, the member for the area, and the parish council. And it's difficult for us if we don't know the area, and I don't. Um, that's the, the best way to go. What I was going to ask, does the parish council have an active neighbourhood development plan in, in force? So we can't take too much notice of, of their comments then. Well, you can take notice of the comments, but it, 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 um, the, the uh, development plan would give them greater um, in leverage or indeed. we have to take greater account of their comments. Indeed, that's right. Exactly. Which is a shame because they've made some decent comments mm -hmm. and we should take them on board. But the officers are quite clear that flooding isn't a problem there. And other um, outside agencies have said the same thing. So it's difficult for us to make mm -hmm. a decision based on what we've been told because it's all it's different evidence. So I'm going to have to sit on my hands for a moment and see what anyone else has to say. Thank you very much. This is rather difficult. I believe, uh, what is the, the I mean, what is the, the rate, the ground levels that have to be raised by in the plan? I... The, the uh, land drainage consultees have requested that there is a condition included for pitch floor levels to be set no lower than 100.3 permitted AOD, uh, which is included, which should make the levels to an acceptable position. So that, that is sort of an acceptance of the fact that there is a risk there. I think, yeah, the flood mapping has shown that obviously there is flooding in the locality. We've seen the images, that isn't denied, but the, the difference in this application is that it has been informed by the relevant assessments that weren't provided in the previous applications. Yeah, and, and the, the refusal of the, of the permission uh, by the by the dismissal of the appeal by by the inspector was based on insufficient evidence of the drainage as far as the drainage and flooding was concerned. Yes, so that the the uh, reason it was dismissed was based on the fact that there wasn't sufficient information to provide certainty in terms of the flooding risks and the effect of that. Right. Are there any other speakers? <coughs> Councillor Andrews. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I remember the site visit that we went to on this site a few years ago. And uh, I have to say that I look at the flood risk comments uh, uh, about floods once in a hundred years. It's only recently evidence has been produced that uh, once in a hundred years, floods now seem to occur twice in two years. 
rather than waiting for a hundred, a hundred year event. I can understand the anxieties of um, local people, the parish council, and I think we're in an extremely difficult position here when all the um, agencies say that there's no problem and local people say that there is a problem. I just wonder, I don't suppose going to have a look at the site will do any good for those people who've not been there because it won't affect the comments, but really this is a very difficult one and I'm honestly not sure which way to go on it. <clears throat> Are there any other people who wish to contribute to the debate? Mm -hmm. Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to make an observation that if one of the conditions for planning consent will be for um, elevated position of the property, then that obviously indicates that uh, there's an understanding of the risk for the area. But also the impact of that could have, if the, if the uh, foundations and the property is elevated, it could take it out of uh, its blending in with local properties. If that property has to be raised higher, then that might uh, cause uh, it to stand out more than, should we say, in the, in the community where it's set up as one observation. Uh, and the other thing is that... Uh, if it's already taken into consideration and runoff is taken into consideration as well with the um, information we've already received, then uh, I think that would be acceptable. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I mean, ultimately, it is about the height of the house. I mean, you know, if it was a bungalow, it wouldn't make much difference, or it was a relatively slow um, you know, height and vary of a house. Um, I, I, do we, what is the actual? Increase of the I've got right um, yeah. uh, there must be the same <laughs> item which has increased in so, old money. If you, have, if you if you go back to the block plan, uh, which shows where the uh, finished floor level will be, um, that plan actually is based on the topographical survey. So you can see the heights of all the other buildings around and the, the heights of the boundaries, etc. So the the boundary with number six is at uh, uh, 100.85 and they're saying it's floor level at 100.03 so it's, it's not a huge amount it's not like it's been raised significantly above ground level nearby as that land slopes away towards um, work um, then that you can again this, this plan shows where that, that topography goes so it goes it's up into 99.24 99.10 so you can see where yes the land is where the land is showing as being at area of risk of flooding, back on from area of risk of flooding on that map with the pink platform, you can see all of that area is lower than, than the site, and you can see that it will be lower than the finished floor level of the house. So it's not raising it so high that it's artificially putting it out of the, it's just that it's a, just a precautionary approach, basically, to make sure that it is higher than the plus. Climate change mm -hmm. so it is higher than the local, yeah, the identified levels that have been teased out of the, the flood risk assessment and the modeling work that they've done. So you have to scroll in on some of these maps to look at those um listing levels that they are on there. Thanks for saying. I'm just looking at figure 4.3, the Environment Agency Surface Water Flooding Map within our pack. Um, the area shaded as low risk, one in a thousand year fluvial flood risk. Clearly at odds with the photographs that we've been shown in the supplementary pack. So I don't think we can rely on the environment agencies mapping here that are being presented, which causes concerns. Um, uh, I was concerned as well, but I'm not sure that the, the actual where the flooding is, is necessarily the the actual site, it's somewhere near the site. I know that that was raised by the planning officer in there. Um, I would like some confirmation from somewhere, that, if possible, where those mm -hmm. photographs were taken yeah. um, and that viewpoint location so that we can ascertain if there is a discrepancy between the mapping that's being provided by the Environment Agency yeah. and supplied by the local, uh, by the council, parish council. Thanks for that. Yeah. Oh, me. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. 
Sorry, Dr. Sorry, what am I talking? Thank you. Um, do do any of the officers know when the environment agency's flooding data was set from? Is there a date? Is that very recent or just historical data? My uh, my understanding is that that that, that mapping was probably. Uh, from around about it. it could be between 2007 and 2010 is I believe the last time that um, it was surveyed um, by the environment agency. Uh, so I think if I can just perhaps just try and clarify a few points, I think that there is no um, there's no misconception that um, the area uh, in and around um, this location is, is susceptible to flooding. Um, the photographs that you've got in your your update sheet quite clearly show quite significant uh, inundation of, of, of the fields um, adjacent to uh, the Worm Brook. Um, we sought to try and clarify um, ahead of the meeting um, exactly what those photographs are showing. Uh, in, in my view, and again, it's my view because we haven't had this clarified by the, the, the taker of the photograph, the, the site that we're looking at today is, is to the right, it's behind, it's sitting behind the shed that you will see on one of those photographs. So I can see that water is clearly rising. And, and as Councillor Thomas has said, that might, those photographs might have been taken when the water was receding in the morning after, after the after after the, um, the, the highest um, levels uh, overnight. I, I think I, and I understand the concern of the committee, I understand the concern that Councillor Thomas has, has, has put to you um, uh, from his own experience and obviously from, from, from the concerns that he's had raised by the parish council and residents, but I, I need to come back to um, a point of, you know, significant importance in the way that we've attached our recommendation for this application you know unlike the previous application which was for a larger part of the site that was potentially going to be much closer to the worm brook this application is is quite well contained unlike the previous application where local knowledge trumped should we say the academic um arguments about where the floodplain mapping showed flooding to be we now have <coughs> you know a technical document a flood risk assessment which didn't exist previously um and so judging the mood of the room and the concerns that have been expressed i would have some some serious reservations about going down a, a flood a flood risk route based on the revised nature of this application and the technical data that underpins this application which wasn't in place previously uh, the scrutiny that it's been given by, by our land drainage consultant, um, the fact that we also have a, a fairly detailed surface water drainage strategy, albeit the detailed technical uh, assessment needs conditioning to, 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 to ensure that we get the, the fine grain uh, information that we need. Um, uh, and so, uh, and, and that is with absolute respect to the, to the local observations that, that have been, 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 been raised. Um, it's just that the evidence that we have um, in the context of this application doesn't lead me to be at all confident about a, a, a motion to refuse the application. Okay, Councillor Boxton, sorry. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Sorry. I feel we can't possibly dismiss photographic evidence of flooding. It's a worry. Sorry, I've listened to everybody else very concerned about the flooding, and photographic evidence is indisputable. Thank you. Councillor Baker. Sorry to come back again, Mr. Chairman, but there are lots of mitigation measures that can be put into, put into place to avoid flooding. And I'm assuming the, the ground levels there slope from north to south towards the, uh, the main road. And then to the right of it, according to this map, there is this brook. And with land drains in, installed at the rear of the properties, it could divert any road water straight into the brook 
I don't know whether that's part of the conditions. I didn't see any mention of it. I got them at home in the back land train where I live, and they work a treat. And they really do take off a lot of floodwater. But um, and I'm still hovering on a decision. Yeah. Sure. Do you want to make any comment to that last comment? I, mean, I can come back on that. I mean, yes, there's a surface water drainage strategy, which includes um, a storage tank set, set behind it, was shown in a, in a turquoise um, hatch plan on one of the plans that you saw earlier. So, so that would is effectively designed to receive surface water and to in an, and then to in an attenuated form to to, to discharge to, to the worm brook. So the theory being that it, it does not increase the rate of runoff over and above what currently exists you know, as, as, a, as an agricultural thing. So that that is the that is the principle on which the surface water drainage strategy is founded, and the flood risk mitigation is is part of that, but it's also the, the raising of the levels um, on, on, on the sites beyond the beyond the mapped area, but allowing for this climate change um, uh, over 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 um, the bridge, should we say, the climate change. Right. Are there any other speakers? We don't have a resolution yet. Um, bear in mind, that, I mean, we're dealing with something quite unusual. It's unfortunate that this is your first first uh, <laughs> first uh, application that you have the new committee have to deal with uh, the evidence is of a technical nature and uh, we have very little um, that we can use against that technical evidence we have some photographs but um, it's not clear where where they relate to the actual site um it's important they were actually taken from the actual site at the time um <clears throat> Right, I'm open to the members to uh, make a, a recommendation that will be voted on. Councillor Baker. Bearing in mind everything we've heard, I will support the officer recommendation for approval. I will second it. Yeah, that's second. Mm -hmm. By Councillor Davis. By Councillor Davis, right. C. Davis. C. Davis. Right. Um, will uh, will the officers would make any comments no, in summarizing the summarizing? You know, I think um, that there's not much more to say. I mean, the debate is clearly been focused very clearly on on the main point of concern, um, and uh, I don't need to say anything uh, more on that. I think councillors understand the risks, understand the mitigation that's in place, and uh, and uh, I'm obviously uh, in the position now to, to to make a Make a decision. Okay. The local member, Councillor Thomas, has the final word. Sorry, I didn't know my I didn't mind. tell you at the beginning it was 10 minutes and there was a time limit, and I think it was, I think five, I was five when we were summing up, but I don't um, think you're going to exceed either. Well, you didn't exceed. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've heard everything um, that's being said. Uh, first of all, you have to understand this. This is uh, a tribute to the war is the, the head of the world book. World book actually has two heads, but it's not, not nearly an elect. Above the, this site is over 2,000 acres, very sloping ground, three and a half square miles. All so a lot of water comes down that brook in a very short time when we have a flood. There's nowhere else for it to go. This field at the moment is just used as sort of a natural floodplain. The little road that runs called Low Lane, which is down one side of the site, is known to flood on a very regular basis. But basically, there's a very little fall from this down a whole half mile, and there's very, very little fall, so you can't flood. Right. Now, what is quite clear on the proposed floor plan which you all should have seen, is that it's quite clear on there. I'm assuming that the red lines on it are the boundaries. So the red line on the left is number six. And you are, it's quite clearly showing it as one meter finished floor level below number six. 
And I know now, and um, I'm speaking to a villager that number six flood the wharf did in the last year flood onto the edge of this garden. So therefore, this is going to be a very severe flood risk. And we are supposed to look at this one in one thousand <laughs> um, event plus I think it's forty three or forty nine percent. Well, we've had. To my knowledge, and you, you've seen the photographs, we had a three flood in this uh, this paddock, this area, in the last, well, since I know 2012. That's an awful lot less than 1,000. We're all told that flooding is going to get worse. And so therefore, this house, and I do not think that they have made sufficient um, progress on mitigating the flood. So I still would very much like this committee to reject this. There, as I say, there are places in this, the ownership of this field, that they can build three, four houses way, way up above the flood. Why they haven't decided to do it, I, I really don't know. But I really do urge you. The, the, I said the Parish Council have absolutely no problem with the design Everything about the house, nobody has any problems at all except for flooding. And I think this is just too, uh, this flood risk is too great to proceed. Thank you. Right, thank you, Councillor Thompson. We'll now move on to the vote. We have a proposal and seconder for the officer's recommendation. Can I ask those in favour of the officer's recommendation, please indicate. Thank you. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Those against. One, two, three, three against. Abstentions. One, two, three, four. Then the recommendation is carried. Can I now ask that the live stream be turned off and we have a short break? Well, Mr. Speaker. And we're live again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd actually welcome you back to the meeting of the Committee of James Chairman. Can I now ask that we now be turned off and we have a short break? Are we all right? I think we are. And we're live again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are we all right? <laughs> we might have to start again. <laughs> It's, uh, well, we're the ashes when we got this, that's what happened. All right, are we? Yeah, we're, 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 we're still going okay. yes, yes. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back to the meeting. We have the next item. We have one public speaker, Mrs. Williams, um, and she has taken her place in the in the gallery for the speakers. Can I now ask the officer, um, Ms. Gibbons? Mm -hmm. Oh, you too. Sorry, so keep the presentation. Mr. Rivers, to make the presentation. Thank you, Councillor James, uh, and thank you, councillors, uh, for those that were able to attend uh, for for joining the public visit yesterday, which I hope was uh, helpful to you uh, in terms of your your consideration of the application. Um, the application uh, is for the change in use of an existing garden building within the garden curtilage of 26 Whitehorse Square. Uh, and before I move into the uh, presentation proper, I just wanted to refer councillors to the update sheet briefly, just to point out the correction that uh, has been made to the nature of the house. Uh, Mr. Williams's house, or the applicant's house is a detached, well, semi-detached house. 
Um, I've also referred there to uh, a representation that councillors would have received uh, in the last two days or so from one of the objectors, um, Mr Price. Um, just quickly, because it came up on the side visit yesterday, I wanted to confirm that the postcode um, that would be assigned to the holiday accommodation would be the same postcode as the new postcode that's been assigned to the warehouse that's being uh, what has been converted at this moment in time. Um, so briefly then on the slide, um, you'll see the application sites marked by the red star. It's located uh, in Whitehall Square um, and to the north of West Bailey Street, uh, from which access is gained currently. The site is within the Great Riders Ward. Next slide, please. Uh, this block plan shows the location. Oh, apologies. Next slide, please. This block plan shows uh, the location of the building, uh, which is, a, as I've said, is within the garden curtilage of the applicant's property, and also illustrates the uh, means of access that exists from West Bailing Street uh, between numbers 87 and 89 West Bailing Street. The larger scale plan identifies the position of a single parking space that's proposed to serve the holiday accommodation and the larger building uh, indicated just in grey there is the uh, existing building uh, which has been historically used uh, as the applicants as part of the applicant seat repair workshop business and which we now know is undergoing conversion uh, with planning permission uh, to a two-bed dwelling. Next slide please. This slide, or this slide shows uh, the uh, building under consideration um, and just to confirm there are no uh, proposed external alterations to the building, we are simply considering the change of use of the building that uh, we saw on site yesterday. Um, councillors will have seen reference to the status of the building as constructed in the reports. Uh, and my advice on that point is that um, whilst there have been discrepancies identified between what was approved and what has been built, uh, those have uh, been so long established now that they are lawful. So there is no concern uh, from, the, from the, 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 the legal point of view about considering an application to change the use of the building as constructed. Next slide, please. So moving on to um, the photographs, uh, this uh, slide shows a range of images of the access to the site from West Bain Street. Um, so the top left is uh, from the west of the site looking towards the access. Uh, the top right slide is the, the reverse angle of that from the east of the site looking towards it. And then the bottom slide is, is, is a photograph uh, looking directly down the existing driveway to the property. Slide. Uh, the the following slide uh, that you can see shows the existing parking arrangement. Um, the top slide, uh, the top left slide is, is a, a view from approximately halfway down the driveway towards the, the parking area and you can see the conversion taking place uh, to the existing workshop. The top right slide is, is a photograph of the, uh, the, the, the parking, the paved parking uh, area um, and the bottom slide is again looking back across the uh, parking area uh, from adjacent to the proposed holiday let, uh, and you can see the driveway, uh, gravel driveway there running back towards West Fane Street. Next slide, please. Uh, this penultimate slide shows um, a selection of views of the uh, existing building itself. As I've said, <coughs> no alterations are proposed to the building, so, so effectively a change of use of the building that you can see in the various images uh, on that slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, finally, uh, is uh, a photograph uh, from the front of the property. Again, councillors, we, we, we ended up uh, at this point um, uh, at the end of our, our site visit, and this this site uh, this this shop basically uh, identifies that the the property, which is uh, in the middle there, does not benefit from off road parking uh, from uh, Whitehall Square, unlike um, its neighbours and, and many other uh, properties in Whitehall Square. And then just one more slide, please. Uh, 
<laughs> so um, in, in conclusion, um, the application seeks uh, to reuse an existing outbuilding within the garden of number 26 Whitehorse Square as a small single bed unit of holiday accommodation. Uh, you will have seen that there has been an unusual level of public interest in response to the application, which is largely or uh, well, primarily the reason why this application is before you uh, today. Uh, a wide range of concerns have been ex expressed through through the consultation um, exercise on the application. Um, th th those range from the limited space available for parking to serve uh, the uses um, that, that are proposed and approved. Um, in, in the existing uh, parking area, restricted visibility um, at the West Bailey Street, West Bailey Street access to the site, uh, the potential concerns around the displacement of existing cars into and onto the road in Whitehorse Square, um, concerns about the uh, mains connection uh, and unacceptable noise resulting from guests, um, all of which are, are understood and acknowledged, um, but I refer councillors to the um, uh, comments that we've received from, from the relevant uh, technical consultees on those matters, where, wherein we have no objection from, from the area engineer, we have no objection from, from Welsh Water, we have no objection from, from the environmental health officer. And so whilst you know clearly there are concerns uh, and those have been well made uh, but by by objectives to the application it's my view that um, there are no technical grounds um, that would uh, uh, lead to um, <coughs> reasons for refusing this application and accordingly uh, a conditional approval is recommended as set out in your agenda pack. Right, thank you. Now we'll move on to the office um, to the speakers. We have uh, received a statement from Hereford City Council, which Mr. Evans will read on the meeting. Yes, so this is a statement on behalf of T. Kerry, Town Clerk of uh, Hereford City Council. City Council objection was based on concerns about traffic and parking in the narrow cul-de-sac. The developer has modified his plan and changed the address of the proposed B and B facility so the traffic will access from the main road. We feel this meets our objection and therefore withdraw it. Right. Now we come to, we have one speaker um, in, in support of the application, Mrs. Williams. You have three minutes, Mrs. Williams. I would like to thank the councillors and planning officers for taking the time to visit the site yesterday so they could gain an insight and understanding of the site in real time. Councillor Toynbee, who was our ward councillor before he became the planning committee member, had been invited on two occasions but declined, to, declined our invite saying he could look at a map. I would also like to inform you that myself and my husband will be on site to manage the holiday let and will not tolerate any noise or bad behaviour from holiday makers at the proposed let. It will be run in a professional manner. We have listened to the objector's concerns and we now have a postal address for the proposed let, which is clearly signed from the road so that visitors will not be entering the square if using SATNAV. It has a new address and postal code, which is 87A West Bailing Street, with the postcode of HR40JE, which is now clearly visible from the road and entrance. Thank you all for your time today. Right. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, if you could return to the public gallery, please. I now ask the local <laughs> member, ward member, Councillor Toynbee, who is the member for the ward. Councillor Toynbee. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. And um, thank you to all of you who joined the site visit yesterday. I know you found it helpful and useful to get a sense of the locations and scale of this application. 
as you can see from the maps, this bit of West Hereford, which is just up the road from here, isn't just straight Victorian streets. The backs of this site um, connect with not just Whitehall Square, but also the back of Thompson Place. So um, I have had some concerns from Thompson Place as well. Um, so it's quite an unusual position, and then of course giving on to um, West Vane Street. Um, I'm pleased that we received that update yesterday from officers and addressing concerns about, in particular, about the postcode. Um, so I'm pleased that my concern about that and others' concerns about that have been addressed. Um, as has already been mentioned, this is before today because I requested that this application be redirected to committee. The grounds being the very high interest and um, very high level of interest um, from residents in my ward. I've had a great deal of correspondence about this and communication, and um, I've paid very close attention to all communication from the applicants and from other residents. Um, as you can see, um, as has already been mentioned, from the representations and as you've just heard in the int introduction, the main concerns are around noise, manoeuvring vehicles, exiting onto West Fading Street, and the knock-on potential displacement of vehicles from the site that has been developed onto Whitehall Square. And paragraph 6.5 to 6.11 respond to this. Also relevant to this application is the history of applications on this slide. Um, and in particular, you can see this in paragraphs 3 and 6.3. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. Right. <clears throat> we have the item. Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chair. We had a very useful uh, visit yesterday, which is very helpful. Now, <clears throat> originally a greenhouse and planning permission granted to replace with a garden room gym. Now we have an application to change to a holiday let. Um, the proposed holiday let is in very close proximity to the main house. I've got a few questions I'm throwing in. Um, will the green space between the holiday let and the main house be a shared space? The main house and the holiday let directly overlook each other. Now on to parking. Uh, the two flats on the proposed holiday let have three allocated parking spaces, which are highly desirable and essential. The parking bays are for modest to, I would say, average sized cars. There was a fair amount of traffic on West Bailing Street at 10 a.m. during our site visit. West Bailing Street will be far busier between 8 and 9, I dare say. Um, <clears throat> parking is a concern. Let's envisage three cars parked in the parking bays. If the vehicles are driven in, there's a very limited turning bay space, and cars should not be reversing out of the busy West Bailing Street or any road, really. Um, and also factoring the bus stop nearby. Highways commented that there would be no change of parking, no increase in parking. I suspect the residents in the two flats will be having visitors at some point. People often rent holiday accommodation to catch up with friends. And there could be two people staying at the holiday lens and arriving in two vehicles. Um, but I dare say the owners could be wise and specify one vehicle only. Um, I'm just wondering, is there sufficient privacy for the holiday rent? Um, uh, and also, uh, where am I? The parking space. Um, whilst it's desirable and essential, is there sufficient space to manoeuvre the vehicles around um, to drive out and not reverse? That's a concern of mine. Okay, thank you. So, can I say, I I looked at that particular space and I thought it was it would be easier to turn around than in most of our council park car park spaces. <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> anyway, Councillor Andrews. Thank you. I think most of the objections were really based around parking. People, you know, residents of uh, Whitehall Square are very worried that the holiday let, which is only a one bed holiday let, so presumably two people maximum, um, would use that 
to Whitehall Square, but the parking spaces have been provided on Westphalian Street. Could I comment that I walk along Westphalian Street regularly as I live nearby, and most of the houses were built in the 1930s. They have very limited car parking space at the front, and car reverse in and out of Westphalian Street on a daily basis. So, and this this car parking space, they can turn, maneuver around and come out in forward gear, which would be highly recommended. I can see no objection to this, and I'm happy to move the officer's recommendation. Is there a second there? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Thomas. Okay. <clears throat> right. Well, there are speakers in there. Councillor Bolton. No, oh, sir. Also, oh, sorry. Thank you. That's all right. Don't worry. I just have a question, Chair. Um, with this property, how does it attain two postcodes if it's one property? I um, can't get my head around that one. Sorry. It's one property, and now we're going to have two postal codes. So, 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 so it's quite a common thing. I didn't know where it is. That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. so the know, planning that. issue, multiple multiple properties in an area would, would have the same postcode. What, what's different here is that Whitehall Square will have a different postcode to the holiday let. So, mm -hmm. so, so they will. To direct it. traffic to the yeah. back of the building. Yeah. That, 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 I didn't that, understand the principle. That, that to a certain extent would keep traffic off. Whitehorse. Well, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate that. I didn't understand how um, yeah. within the land house you could have two minutes. Thank you. Um, Chair. I don't think that we can have a look at this and assume that things are going to happen or to expect that things are going to happen. Looking into the future, I think we have to have a look at um, the reports that have been thoroughly uh, looked at and we've examined them. So I would support this uh, application. Right, uh, Councillor Thomas, then Councillor <coughs> Baker, and then Councillor Hamlet. Um, the only concern I have with this is, plan is parking. Um, it's quite right that if you, your visitor has a vehicle the size of mine, it would probably struggle to turn around. And that's really the only, the buildings are there. The fact that it's now a gym or it's going to be an Airbnb, which I personally have, it, it I quite frankly, it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to increase the traffic. I, I, I can't see that it's really mm -hmm. going to make a great deal of difference. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Chairman. I'm always concerned with piecemeal type developments. And what we've seen here with the planning history, it was a garage and then it's a single story house. And then there's a replacement of a greenhouse with a block built garden room. And now it's going to be a holiday let. And so where do we go on? And Councillor Foxton alluded to it. But we can we can say, can't we, over over time, that uh, anything could happen there. We could have aliens visiting, could be <laughs> <people, laughs> no, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Yeah. So we've got to look at it on, on its merits. And I think the only concerns, I had a very lengthy email from a resident. It wasn't all did, and I think we all got one. It wasn't addressed to me particularly, but uh, it was mostly about parking. But there is a one bed holiday left with a parking space. What's wrong with that in the middle of Hereford City? Uh, no problems with that. I'll, I'll support the approval. Thank you. Come to the Yes, I'm also uh, the and I approve uh, of this one. But the question which I don't think has been raised by anybody yet, at the moment we have the owner of the property living in Whitehall Square, the um, let being uh, part of his property, and the current conversion that's going on of the two bedroom house, presumably also owned by the same landowner. If at any time this gets separated, is the, is the two bedrooms unit going to be on the open market for sale? And in which case is the um, parking, for instance, and access and everything apportioned to those properties in a way that's satisfactory. Yeah, I think that would be the market would more or less decide that ultimately. I assume that if it was sold, it would be sold with a with a holiday left with the with the one or the or other of the houses. It would appear to fit together with yeah. the holiday left. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, um, are there any other speakers? Councillor Singh. Um, um... Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I used to live in Ryland Street for 10 years, um, quite a while ago now, but 
parking is always an issue. I'm very conscious of the objectors concerns around parking. However, I don't think that can be a material consideration in our in our judgment here. Yeah. So I'll be moving to bring that up. Okay, are there any other speakers? We're not. We have a proposal where it's been proposed and seconded. I'll move to the offices again. Which to make any comments on them? No, I think it's been a good discussion just covering issues, so I can go to it. Right, then I'll turn to the local member to sum up the bit. And to join it. Thank you. I'll just say thank you to all of you attendees and Club Academy and thank you, Craig.